So this is the one-dimensional linear wave equation. On the left-hand side, we have a second derivative with respect to time. On the right-hand side, we have a second derivative with respect to space. And these two second derivatives are equal up to this constant c squared. And c has units of meters per second. And c is the speed of the wave. Now, surprisingly perhaps, any function y of x of t, any function of x and t of this form, omega t minus kx, solves the wave equation. Now, omega and k are just constants. But anything with this form of something times t minus something times x will solve the wave equation. In fact, it doesn't even need to be negative here. It can be plus. Just this linear addition of time and space. Some function of that will solve the wave equation. Here's a proof. Here's our function. Does it solve the 1D linear wave equation? Well, let's start by calculating the second derivative with respect to time. That pulls out a factor of omega squared to the front and leaves us with a second derivative of the function f. When we take a second spatial derivative, we get a factor of negative k squared out the front, so k squared, and a second derivative with respect to space. So you can see these two things are equal up to a factor of omega squared and k squared. So we can write that the second derivative with respect to time is equal to the second derivative with respect to space multiplied by omega squared on k squared, just taking into account these factors here. Now this is exactly the one-dimensional linear wave equation provided c squared is equal to omega squared on k. So omega, as we've mentioned before, is the frequency or angular frequency of the wave. And that's equal to 2 pi f, where f is the linear frequency in hertz. K is the wave vector of the wave. It's 2 pi divided by lambda. This means c equal to omega on k is actually the same equation as c equal to lambda f, which you've probably seen before for waves. So here we've shown that this function here, this arbitrary function f of kx minus omega t, solves the 1D linear wave equation. So it's not just waves don't have to be just sine waves. They can be anything provided they are of this form. Let's have a bit of a look now at how waves work using Mathematica. So we've got uh, some sliders here where we can change time, k, and omega. And our wave here is a sine wave, sine of omega t minus kx. We're starting with k and omega both equal to 1, so it's just sine of t minus x. If we roll time forwards, then we see the wave moving forwards, which is great. That's what we want the wave to do. All good. What happens if we change k? So time back to zero, make k a factor of three larger. What happens now? Well, we see the wavelength shortening. So the wavelength is inversely proportional to k. Lambda is two pi divided by k. So k goes up, wavelength goes down. We can run time forwards, and if you look back, you'll see that this wave is actually running much more slowly than that first wave we looked at. So the speed of the wave is omega divided by k. k goes up, speed goes down. How do we get the speed back to where it was when we started? Well, we make the ratio of k and omega the same. So now when we run this wave, this is the speed we knew originally had. So if omega divided by k is a constant, as you change the wavelength, then you have waves moving at the same speed. Okay, now at the moment the argument of the sine function is omega t minus kx. If we change the sine of k, so let's make k equal to minus 3, like this, then what we find is that a wave starts to run backwards. So now we have omega t plus kx, and our wave goes backwards. And you can kind of see how this works. Um, so the velocity of the wave now, omega divided by k, is negative. So it's going in the negative direction. Another way to think about this is that k we call the wave vector. It carries information about the direction of wave propagation. If k is negative, then the wave's traveling in the negative direction. So it might be instructive to look at a wave which is not a regular sine wave. Instead, we're here we're going to look at a Gaussian. So we showed analytically that any function that acts on the argument omega t minus kx will solve the wave equation. So here our argument is t minus x because omega and k are both equal to 1. And this argument is the thing which is inside our Gaussian here. So it's e to the negative t minus x all squared. This is what the function looks like. And this is how it will propagate in time. It's a Gaussian pulse moving in the forward direction. Now, just as we did before, we can increase the size of k. And if we do that, we see that the Gaussian pulse becomes narrower. So we've 
decrease the wavelength, if you like, by increasing k. And just as before, if we now run this wave forward in time, we can see it moving, but it's slowed down because the ratio of omega and k is now smaller. If we increase omega, then as before, we can now make a wave that moves at the same speed as we originally had with omega and k equal to 1. And also just as before, if we make k negative, then we can get a wave that goes in the backwards direction. At this point, it's worth saying something about the interpretation of omega and k in the case of this Gaussian wave. When we have a harmonic wave, so a sine wave or a cosine wave, then the meaning of omega and k was really clear. Omega tells you something about the period of the wave in time, and k tells you something about the period of the wave in space, or the wavelength. In the case of a Gaussian, however, it's not a periodic function, and so we can't really talk about a wavelength or a frequency, a, a temporal frequency. Nevertheless, omega and k still have the same units of radians per second and radians per meter, and they do the same sorts of things to the wave when you change them. So if you make k bigger, it compresses the wave in space, and if you make omega bigger, then it compresses the wave in time. So they do the same sort of thing. Now in fact, as it turns out, you can construct a Gaussian, or indeed any function, as a sum of harmonic waves, so as a sum of sine and cosine waves. This comes as a part of Fourier theory, which we deal with in a later year course.